Now, there's some in the fan base who say, well, you know, looking at Randall's production here and, and him falling off from, from last year, they, they say, well, why did the front office rush to sign him to that deal? Why not let it play out, let it go into free agency, and then decide from there? Um, from a general manager's perspective, how do you, you know, weigh that, those decisions where a guy's having a hell of a year, he's an all-star, he's most improved player, he, he's getting votes for All-NBA, All-NBA defense, you know, how do you consider that when you, you're looking at roster construction and building for your future? Yeah, hey, great question. And this is where the salary cap and the CBA really come into play, uh, CP, because I think one of the big misperceptions sometimes is if, say, if a 20-plus million dollar player walks out the door, that you can replace him with a 20-plus million dollar player. It, it doesn't always work that way. That, that's the first issue, right? The, the cap space is significant, and the Knicks uh, you know, are going to operate as an over-the-cap team, at least for the immediate future, especially given some of the contracts they signed last offseason. Uh, you know, Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, Derek Rose, New Orleans Noel. Uh, so I bring it up. It, the difference could not be uh, between do we want Julius Randle or another guy who's uh, maybe a borderline all-star has made the all-star team and you know, top 50 player in the league. It could be, uh, do we want Julius Randle or an exception guy or a minimum guy? You, you know, that, that's that's what it is financially. Um, so uh, I, I was a fan of the extension at the time. I, I still, you know, think it's it's a fine extension. Obviously, again, his value, as we all know, isn't what what it was a year ago today. Um, but but that can change, as you know, things change quickly in the NBA. Um, you know, ba based on team play. I look at a team like the Atlanta Hawks, where they're certainly feeling differently about their team, and I think some of their individual players than they were three or four weeks ago when they, when they were badly underachieving. Um, so so I think Julius, you know, will be in New York. Um, and, and one of the trends, and one of the things that. Leon Rose and Scott Perry uh, have told people about the Knicks is um, they're going to try to um, draft and develop and, and trade and incrementally improve their team that way. They're not banking on what the Knicks have banked on in the recent past. And as you know, CP, better than anybody that's gotten the Knicks in trouble, especially in 2019, uh, banking on one or two superstars um, saying, I want to go to New York and the Knicks blow open a ton of cap space. We saw what happened in 2019 when, when Kyrie and KD went across the river to Brooklyn. So I think it's a wise strategy. Now, it's a difficult strategy because you kind of have to climb that ladder rung by rung. You know, there's no elevator that takes you to the top like Kevin Durant or, um, you know, some superstar coming to your franchise, um, you know, would do. But uh, this is the NBA. If you look at the just the stars around the league, put, put the Knicks aside, but if you look at the superstars around the league, as the salary cap goes up and up and the contracts get so big, Big CP, very few players are turning down, you know, 40, 50 million dollar deals. Even looking ahead, some of these guys like James Harden, if he signs a five year max deal, he might be, be making 60 plus million dollars five years from now. So, so the money is insane. And I bring it up because I think that'll put more onus on the trade market in particular. Uh, and then obviously drafting and developing is always important to your franchise. But, but I think now the NBA is less about free agency than it has been, at least in the recent past. Uh, teams don't have cap space and, and the superstars aren't hitting free agency for the most part. They're taking the money. And then the new trend CP, as you know, is if they're unhappy after they have the money, then they ask for a trade. And, and that's why I didn't necessarily mind the way they went about this offseason you know, running it back and, and signing to these guys to, yeah, multi-year deals, but also with team team options, which I thought gave them some flexibility if they right. wanted to, you know, pursue a sign and trade down the road. But just given the fact that it just didn't seem like a lot of these stars were really going to hit the open market, I just felt like it was, it was probably best for them to continue on this path in terms of how they construct their roster. Hasn't worked out that well so far, but, you know, I, I, I just didn't mind it. Yeah, I liked it better. I was covering the free agency period live for NBA TV. And when I thought they were straight for your contracts, I, I didn't like it. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. But then when I saw the team option uh, after year three, which team option, team controls it, it's their decision, um, that makes it easier to trade them. And historically, from my 15 plus years experience, CP on the team side, now doing three or so on the media side, usually with two years left on a player's contract, uh, two guarantees, years left. Even if the player underachieves, as long as the contract's not a disaster, other teams will listen, right? Maybe he's not the centerpiece of a deal, but they will listen to it. So I bring it up because um, that is the position the Knicks will be in this offseason. They're not in it now, but uh, you know, if, if you think um, you know Evan Fournier or Burks or Rose, uh, you know these guys who got longer deals. 
um, you know, are untradeable. Um, that gets easier uh, with two years left. And then obviously it gets progressively easier the closer to the end of that deal you get, especially as an expiring contract. Um, so I, I feel badly for the Knicks. I, it seems like they've been snake bitten a lot of ways. Everything that kind of went right last year has seemingly gone wrong this year, starting with Derek Rose. Of all the contracts, if I look at all the free agent contracts they signed this offseason, I think Rose was the best. He's obviously played great. He's having a late career renaissance in New York. He's embraced the franchise. The fans and the franchise embraced him. He, he's been injured. Uh, and I think that's a you know, big part of the reason the Knicks are, uh, what, 12th in the Eastern Conference and yeah. underachieving. 